Hello and welcome back to AP Psychology here on Educator.com. This particular segment and this unit, we're going to be taking a look at states of consciousness. Now in uh, the AP outline, states of consciousness is only 2 to 4%. So I'm kind of going to be giving you a fair amount of information here. It's not going to play that big of a role in the AP test itself. However, because it's about sleep and drugs and hypnosis, it tends to be one of the more popular units um, in the AP course. So we'll be looking at sleeping and dreaming, hypnosis, and then in the next segment, looking at psychoactive drug effects. Overview and objectives. Understanding consciousness and what it encompasses is critical to an appreciation of what is meant by a given state of consciousness. The study of variations in consciousness includes an examination of the sleep cycle, dreams, hypnosis, circadian rhythms, and the effects of psychoactive drugs. Objectives. Describe the various states of consciousness and their impact on behavior. Discuss aspects of sleep and dreaming, stages and characteristics of those stages, uh, of the sleep cycle rather, theories of sleep and dreaming, symptoms and treatments of sleep disorders, looking at hypnosis and the historic and contemporary uses of it, explain the hypnotic phenomenon, and then major figures in consciousness, and that's going to include William James, Sigmund Freud, and Ernest Hilgard. So that's the AP overview of this unit. Probably one of the shortest ones we'll encounter. So what is consciousness? It is a level of awareness about ourselves and our environment. So I am aware that I am speaking to a camera, to an audience through the internet. I'm aware that I am sitting in a chair. I aware, I'm aware that I am sitting here in my location in the United States. And I'm aware that I am in a location where I am working with other people. We are conscious to the degree that we are aware of what is going on inside and outside of ourselves. And there are going to be some terms coming up that we're going to make some distinctions. We, and we are going to distinguish between waking consciousness versus altered states of consciousness. So right now, in talking with you, I have a waking consciousness. I am awake. I am uh, alive. I am aware of what's going on around me. And there are different levels of consciousness that different psychologists will use in describing their understanding of what it means to have consciousness. Now, there's the philosophical discussion. That includes the mind-body problem. Does the mind influence the body? Does the body influence the mind? If so, to what extent do they influence each other? And or is there some sort of a mutual inter interdependence? This goes back all the way to the ancient Greeks and beyond into the Upanishads into uh, ancient India. Dualism is the idea that the mind is one thing, it's over here, and the body is another, it's over here. And they're not, they're not really um, connected, they are dual, they are separate from each other. They neither can be deduced from the other. Just because you have a body doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to find a mind there. And there's the idea uh, within philosophy of materialism, and that is the only thing that exists is either matter or energy, and all phenomena resulting from material interactions. So if it's not involving matter or energy, then materialists will say, well, then it's kind of pointless to look at that because we're making stuff up now. 